Mel Natale. This is the Astro Mosaics podcast. Today we're going to get deep into some real talk about Saturn, how understanding the Saturn cycle can really illuminate your relationship to limitation and release you from fears. So full disclosure, I'm smack dab in a head-on collision of a Saturn opposition in my life. And lately I've been really frustrated by my limitations. I've been annoyed at how completely flawed I am. I'm just irritated by stupid things I say or do. And sometimes I just want to melt out of my human personality and just be that essence that's behind this body that I'm in, this physical earth expression. Sometimes I just want to disassociate completely. (laughs) Have you ever felt that way? Let me know if you can relate to that. Thank goodness for astrology because I know these feelings have an archetypal source and that representative is played by the Saturn cycle. So wherever you have Saturn in your chart, you're going to find a real big clue as to where you experience feeling like some kind of an outsider in your life or where you feel misunderstood or limited in some way. When we bump up against our Saturnian boundaries, which are defined by where Saturn is in our natal chart and what aspects it makes, etc., We can find ourselves in a feeling of great distress. It's very distressing. Saturn represents the cycle of commitment and reality. When you track the Saturn cycle, it can really help you understand what's going on when things feel challenging. And it can give you more perspective in your life. So every seven years, you get a major Saturn aspect that's going to be a significant player in your reality. Now, Most people know about Saturn returns. It's pretty well known at this point. That's when transiting Saturn returns to the same degree where it was when you were born. Returns. It's like a new moon of the Saturn cycle. People with Saturn in Pisces, this is happening to you in your life right now. We get the first Saturn return, which is the boundary between being a child and really being an adult. That happens around age 28 to 30. And the second Saturn return happens sometimes in your early 50s. It's also a very significant moment where you're ushering into a new phase of life. Halfway between a Saturn return, you get a Saturn opposition. So this is when Saturn's traveled halfway. That's 14 years into the cycle of 28 years. Saturn and Virgo people, this is happening in your life right now. Saturn opposition is a personal transit that doesn't get much press. It's kind of like a full moon expression of your own Saturn cycle. Think about how significant this time can be for a clear, objective view of your natal Saturn position. It's looking straight at your natal Saturn and it's asking you to look into the deep, dark, truthful mirror. And it's going to tell you things that I still love you too much to say, to quote Elvis Costello. You have to see it. You have to understand it for yourself. Being in my own Saturn opposition period, I basically feel like I'm in a room of deep, dark, truthful mirrors, like an 80s aerobics workout room with Jamie Lee Curtis instructing and John Travolta's in her class. And it's that kind of room, but with zero sexual tension. (laughs) Everywhere I look, there's my super prudent Virgo difficulty drenched in all these limitations and obstacles. Mm. So if you have Saturn in Gemini or Saturn in Sagittarius natally, you're getting a Saturn square. And this is a time of friction in your life as well. Gemini is probably feeling square as a limitation in your action, ability to do things. And Sagittarius, this is a time of like reorientation for you significantly. And it links into fear. Your Saturn cycle experience is going to be unique to you based on your own personal natal chart. But all Saturn lessons can be seen in constrictive times. And that's when it's easy to be enticed to give in to fear. And letting that perception of your limitation become real, become reality. The actual Saturnian task at hand is to just push harder through the difficulty. And that's easy to say, hard to do. The boundary is there from Saturn and it's an obstacle. It's not a dead end. It's an obstacle. There's going to be a detour and that detour might be up a mountain, like a really steep mountain, most likely, but it's not a limit. There's a way around. Okay. We have to work hard for it though. And it kind of reminds me of the Odyssey and we're playing the part of Odysseus. We have to go through all these struggles to get back to where we belong, to get back home. I've been feeling really pressured by my own Saturn cycle recently, and I had to get my mind off of things. So when I need to do that, I just read. And I pulled out this book called The Laws of Human Nature by Robert Greene. I opened to this story that happened to be about Socrates. 
Now, the first time I ever heard about Socrates, I was a little kid watching Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Do you remember that movie? It's this time travel movie. These two high schoolers are <laughs> going to fail history, so they go through time to collect a bunch of, you know, historical figures. Anyway, Socrates was one of them, and they called him Socrates. Hey, we know that name. Yeah. Hey, look him up. Oh, it's under Socrates. Oh, yeah. Socrates. The story about Socrates is kind of in the same vein of the Bill and Ted's version of it. It's, it's about his philosophy of softening rigid mental patterns in order to melt resistance and overcome challenges. Melt resistance, overcome challenges. That's significant. All right, here's the story. Socrates had a super fan. His name was Carathon. He was a young guy who just like obsessed over Socrates. He said he was the greatest guy ever. And he was really frustrated that other Athenians didn't revere Socrates like he did. Why didn't everybody love him? Chariphon visited the Oracle of Delphi, and he asked the Oracle if there was any wiser man in all of Athens than Socrates. And the Oracle answered, no. So Chariphon was so excited. He was vindicated. He was right. Socrates was the wisest man in Athens. So being a young guy, he was super excited to rush home and tell his mentor that he was the smartest man ever. But Socrates, you know, he did not react well to this. Why? Because he was a very humble man and he became determined to prove the Oracle of Delphi wrong. To do this, Socrates visited a lot of people, all the most eminent men in their own fields of art, business, philosophy, and so on and so on. When they talked about their areas of expertise with Socrates, he'd ask them questions about whatever they were specialists in, they appeared exceptionally intelligent. They knew all the right answers. But on other topics that weren't of their specialty, they would act like they had all the answers, but they were just regurgitating common knowledge. It was nothing original, nothing new. They didn't really know what they were talking about. But they'd answer anyway. Over time, Socrates got to the point where he had to admit the oracle was accurate. He was wiser than any other man in Athens, and the reason he was more wise than any other man in Athens is because he was aware of his own ignorance. The only true wisdom consists in knowing that you know nothing. That's us, dude. Oh, yeah. Socrates examined and re-examined his ideas. He could see all of his inadequacies. He could see his irrational human emotions embedded within them. He was very clearly seeing himself. And throughout his life, Socrates assumed the weaker, vulnerable position of an ignorant child. He was always asking questions. What does this have to do with the Saturn cycle? Well, Socrates is a great example of a person who released the fear of not knowing, who leaned into that fear of not knowing and became the wisest man in Athens because of his ignorance. Thinking we need to control everything is where we get lost when, when all we really need to do is do our best and work through hard things and then let it be. You know, the limits and boundaries of being in a human incarnation are really vast, you know, when you think about it. We're limited to whatever scientific advances can offer us. We're limited to ideas that we've been conditioned to believe, things that are embedded into us by our families, by our cultures. We're limited to knowledge available to whatever historical period we live in. I mean, <laughs> thinking about that famous dinosaur bone from the 17th century. They couldn't think about dinosaurs. There was no such thing. Above all else, though, we really are limited by our own rigidity of our minds. The biggest pain of the Saturn cycle is embedded in the rigidity of the mind. Saturn's tricky. In ancient astrology, Saturn's known as the planet of feigned appearances, which means that Saturn hides truth behind something else. You don't get it unless you're good enough to work through it to get it, right? You have to work hard with Saturn stuff. There's a boundary. There's a gate kept locked to those who aren't up for the challenge of picking a really hard lock, okay? <laughs> I've been looking into this mindfulness app. It's called Aura. And this morning I was notified about a three-minute morning affirmation by this clinical psychologist. His name's Dr. Ryan C. Warner. Okay. I figured, why not? It's three minutes. I can find three minutes before I have to take my kids to school. Whatever. I really needed some affirmations, to be honest. So I listened to it. Dr. Warner said something that really stuck with me. He said, push out of conscious awareness and focus on the right now. Saturn fears are projections. 
they're not of the right now. They're not of the moment that we're in. It's projected into the future. And that was something I felt like I could take with me all day. And then after that, Dr. Warner said, repeat these things out loud. And one of the things I was repeating was, today will be a day that I will use to be the best that I can be. In the end, that's just <laughs> what we need to remember when a Saturn cycle thing gets us feeling this way. And just let that be enough because it's a lot. We're trying our best. We're doing our best. And that's the reward. When we do our best, we try our best, and we don't give up, we get rewarded by Saturn and the Saturn cycle. I'm going to leave a link to the Aura app in the description below. So if you feel like you could benefit from exploring it, that'll be there for you in case you want to check it out. I like you just the way you are. I'm working hard on liking myself just the way I am too. And I want to thank you for sharing this time and this space with me, for accepting me as I am, being so kind to me. I'm flawed, but I'm sincere. And I really enjoy being on this journey with you through this odyssey of life, all levels of it. I'll talk to you next time. Thanks for listening.